Hi, I'm Gregory Luce with Adoptee Rights Law Center, and this will be a presentation on FOIA and intercountry adoptees, how to get your own U.S. immigration records. I am with the Adoptee Rights Law Center, where I represent domestic and intercountry adoptees on issues of identity, citizenship, and I also advocate across the U.S. on issues related to the rights of adult adopted people. First, what records are we talking about when we say, let's get our own immigration records? Well, you may have personal records already. They, sometimes they're given to you by adoptive parents. Your adoptive parents may have those records as well. If not, that's partially why we're here to figure out how to request and obtain your own immigration records. There are also judicial records, court records, if the intercountry adoption was finalized in a US state court. There are adoption agency records and access to those will vary by agency and state law. Uh, generally, I've found it uh, fairly easy to get those records for intercountry adoptees, but not always and not in all states. And then you've got USCIS or immigration records. It's the largest, probably the largest batch of records available to you upon request. And that's what this uh, presentation is about. There are also, and I'll talk briefly about these uh, US Department of State records as well as U.S. Customs and Border Protection records related to entry into the U.S. A few acronyms that you may hear as I throw them around. Uh, FOIA is F-O-I-A, is Freedom of Information Act. USCIS is the US, U.S. Immigration and Citizenship Services. CBP and DOS are U.S. Customs and Border Protection and U.S. Department of State. There is a site online dhs.gov slash terms that'll go through many of these acronyms because sometimes they can get a little confusing as to which ones apply to which agency. The primary repository of records for intercountry adoptees are essentially three different U.S. federal agencies. Uh, the biggest one of, is USCIS or the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. So those will have all the records related to an intercountry adoptee's immigration to the US and uh, potentially the adoption if the adoption occurred overseas. There is also the US uh, Customs and Border Protection, and this relates to inspection and entry into the US. That's typically what's called an I 94 record. And then the Department of State, which has uh, passport application records and other uh, may, may have visa related records as well, although the visa records are typically within USCIS. We're going to be talking about a FOIA request for the USCIS A file or the alien registration file. So that's the one we're talking about. And these are the basic documents on file with USCIS. Immigration records, of course. There may be adoption related records. So if there is an adoption or guardianship proceeding in the country of origin, those should be in the immigration records as well. Sometimes there are birth records. Uh, sometimes it's not a birth record, but a certificate of abandonment. And sometimes the birth records are removed or redacted. And so that's something to look out for as you get the records uh, from USAS um, returned to you. There are also translated documents. If the intercountry adoption occurred in a, a country that in which the primary language is not English, and there are a whole host of other records, which could include home studies on the adoptive parents, tax returns, and um, state-based approval of adoptions. There are three general ways to make a FOIA request to USCIS, uh, either a simple email request, a paper form that you mail in, or online via the first portal. Uh, you only need two things to make a FOIA request. One, it has to be written. And two, it has to describe the records you're seeking. So you could easily do that through email, but I don't recommend it because it just becomes a much harder process to get it into the right place and to get USCIS to respond to the email request. Same kind of goes for a paper form, which is the G639. You can mail that in but it's going to take more time to process that because they generally just turn it into an online portal and then mail you the information that you can then request. 
we're going to talk about online via um, the website first.uscis.gov. To use the first USAS process, you need to first create a USCIS account. Uh, you can do that at uscis.gov, and there are links in the upper right related to signing in or creating an account. So you're going to want to sign up and uh, create an account. To create an account, you're going to need a valid email address. You need to answer some security questions, verify your email address, and the USCIS uses an authenticator app or uses a secondary verification like text or email. So you're going to need some patience in applying for an account, but it is worth it because it's much easier to request your records through the my.uscis.gov site. There is a video available. And you have the link there. The Freedom of Information Act, also called. And the video provides a quick overview of the online first system, which um, is the system the USCIS work uses for um, for your request. And the link to the video is there. So at this point, you should have set up a user account for requesting your own records through the FOIA system of USCIS. And you're going to be requesting your own records. So you're going to click on for myself. It sees that I had an old draft, so, but I'm going to just do a new request. And the first screen you come to asks what kind of records you're requesting. This is new. Um, and they have a long list of records. And if you need only one record, if you are very sure that you only need, for instance, proof of lawful permanent residence, or if you want to see if you have proof of an application for naturalization or anything else that's on this list, you just click that and, and do the same entries as we are going to do for requesting the alien file. The alien file, though, if you want that, you're going to have to choose other, scroll down a little bit, and actually type in alien file. And that alien file has all the records in your immigration file if you have one with USCIS. They do have expedited processing. Typically, these circumstances don't exist in the type of cases that I do. They may apply to you. Uh, I, you're going to have to either uh, determine if that's true with uh, by consulting an attorney. But in the most, most circumstances, I don't check any of these boxes and I uh, click no because I do not have an immigration court proceeding upcoming. Click next. If you know your A number or alien registration number, you should enter it here. If you're unsure of it, I wouldn't enter it because you don't actually need it to make the request. They will search on your name. Um, and if you uh, get it wrong, it may delay getting your records because they're gonna search on a record that may not exist. Enter your country of birth. I'll just um, enter France for myself. Uh, and a date of birth, I'll just enter a uh, date of birth that's not mine, but just making it up. And it's important to have the right birth date and the birth date that is listed generally on your uh, country of origin, if you have that. Um, sometimes they've changed, but uh, usually you use that um, birth date. It asks what other receipts you may have filed with USAS. These are other applications or petitions and which come with a re receipt number. But if you haven't done that, then you're gonna skip this. If you have, and you know for sure what the receipt number is or the petition uh, number may be, you could put that in there. But I typically skip that because I want the entire alien file. You're gonna input your full legal name here. So I'll just do that. Whoops, as I often do, I, I put in my first name as my last name, that's a common mistake. And they'll search for your first name as your last name and come up with no records found. So make sure you put in your last name first and first name and then middle name. If you've used other names in the past, you should put those in there as well. I'm just gonna make one up in case there was a name change, which is not uncommon. And it asks what your full name used upon entry to the US. Um, this is fairly common in cases where there wasn't a full and final adoption in the country of origin. So if you know that, and a lot of adoptees, intercountry adoptees do, you would put um, that name in this 
box. And I'm just going to say, well, I used that name as in the past. And that was actually the name that I had when I entered the country. Click next. Um, obviously, it's an uh, email or a address, and you're going to pick the country. You have to scroll down quite a ways to get the United States if your address is here in the US. I'm putting my office address here. And putting a phone number. I'm just going to actually just put. Uh, Take one. And that's the same as your daytime phone number. You can click that. It has my email address already based upon the account, uh, the user account. Click next. You would put your father's name. Uh, it's required, unless you don't know and you could put my father's name is unknown. Uh, but you're going to put that information here. This is your adoptive parent's name, not your, if you even know it your birth parent's name, generally. So I'm just gonna put a made up name. I'll just say it's Charles Henry the first. And mother's name. And I just made that up. If there's a, if there's a maiden name, you could put that there. This one didn't, this made up name didn't change the name upon marriage and so i'm not going to put that in there this is a somewhat uh confusing question i typically skip this because it could typically you don't need this if you want your entire alien file and so uh but if you want specific information about other people that may appear on the records you could put that in there as well uh, i again i typically skip that this is also new avoiding redaction of records mentioning additional persons um, this seems to be a suggestion that they will redact your adoptive parent names or even uh, birth parent names that typically may be done with birth parent names. It's hard to, to tell often. It's not done with adoptive parent names. So I typically skip this as well. Um, it's new and I skip it. But if there is a specific person that you're interested in that may be in your records um, and they may redact that information, it's hard to say whether they will or not you may need their permission to release their information. Click next. Here you can upload documents if you have any to um, upload to support your request. Typically you don't need this if you're requesting your own file. Click next. And then you have a review of what you're requesting. You have full legal name, names used in the past, um, address and phone number and email, father's and mother's name, this is the important part that the requested file type is alien file. Uh, you don't have any expedited processing concerns. You don't have any uploaded documents, typically not. And then you're going to sign under penalty of perjury. You have read and agree to the above statement, type in your name to sign, and then you submit the request. When you go back, you'll get an NR, what's called an NRC number or a National Record Center number. And when you go back, you can always check on the status. So this is what the screen should look like when you sign back in and it will have uh, where your request is in the queue and the status and an estimated completion date. Once it is complete, you can click on document library and then you're going to get a list of the records that are available for download. That includes the responsive record. Those are the essentially the A file. A partial denial, which means there may be um, redacted, redactions, which typically there are. And then there's the acknowledgement letter when you first filed the request. What if you get nothing? And that happens. It, they just didn't find a record uh, under the name that was listed on the request. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Make sure you didn't make any mistakes on filling out the form and you sometimes put the uh, first name where the last name goes in, into the form or some other misspelling. So make sure that's um, correct. If you find something that was incorrect, you can always um, send and submit additional information. There's a email down here where you can try to resolve it without having to refile it completely again. 
if through that you still can't find any records, I, I think you need to determine why. And that's a, always a hard thing to determine. Um, you may need to have some important conversations with adoptive parents to determine what was done uh, to secure your citizenship or your immigration and determine what kind of uh, visa you entered the country on. And hopefully it was an immigrant visa and not a tourist visa, because if it's a tourist visa, there will be no A file because you were not considered an immigrant. And then also consider a FOIA with other agencies if you can't find any, any USCIS records. And that includes the basic documents on uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection and documents on file with the Department of State. That's typically passport applications. That's it. It should be fairly straightforward to make the request online, especially using this video to help you through it. And it takes about four to six weeks to get the records returned to you, and they would be available online when you sign in to the um, USCIS portal to retrieve those records. If you have any questions, you can certainly reach out at greg at adoptyrightslaw.com. I limit my representation to uh, adoptees only, adult adoptees who are either domestically born or intercountry adoptees who have issues with U.S. citizenship or other identity issues. Thanks. Thank you.